Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation. Watch Kalamazoo Lively Arts every Tuesday at 6 p.m. The Air Zoo is an aerospace and science educational experience really for all ages designed to inspire and educate kids through adults on just the amazing accomplishment of aviators from a long time ago toward the future of where we're going both with space flight and of course with our incredible airplanes. What's very important here at the Air Zoo is we don't call ourselves an air and space museum. When people think about typical museums it's hey couple of airplanes in a hangar and you look around and you see that hangar. You feel like you're in a hangar. Well, what we've done is we've instituted the element of art into every piece of the experience because we wanted to take people out of the museum. We wanted to put people into the world of aviation. So when you come in into our main exhibit hall, you'll see an 800 foot long by 32 foot high mural painted by Rick Herter that shows the entire history of flight from the early balloons to the barnstormers, the World War I era, World War II era aircraft, all the way up through space flight with the International Space Station. When it was completed after about 14 months, it took two people 14 months to complete, it was the largest indoor mural in the world. It took about 200 or so paintbrushes that they went through in order to do that. But we went even further than that. If you come and you look at the floor of the museum, that was also designed to be part of the entire experience. We had uh, a person come in and he painted 40, 45 inch by 45 inch squares designing that exhibit floor, which were eventually blown up made into vinyl and laid down on the exhibit floor. So when you're over uh, looking through some of the, Euro, the World War I airplanes, you feel like you're on, you're on an, an English airfield. When you go over to the space side, you feel like, like you're being encompassed into the universe. So again, it's all designed to create this experience so people don't say, I walked into a museum. They say, I am part of this entire experience living the aviation and space experience time for some show and tell of your artifacts. What do you have to share? Well, when I think about art at the Air Zoo, we've got a lot of great photographs, a lot of great paintings all over the Air Zoo, but there's a really unique niche of art that we love to talk about, and that is trench art. So trench art is exactly what you think it is. That was art created by our soldiers during World War I, during World War II, while they were in the trenches. Because you think about warfare at that time, there was a lot of trench digging, preparing for battles, and there would also be a lot of downtime where the soldiers would just be sitting, waiting for orders, not sure, do we advance, do we retreat, or do we sit in that trench? So there was a lot of art created during that downtime. So I've got some examples that I'd love to show here. They must have had some unique utensils to use. Well. Uh, unique, I suppose. <laughs> this one, I guess, would be, would be unique. This was actually the shell of a German howitzer. And so at one point, this was, was actually just a straight kind of a c cylinder there. And an individual had made this piece. It looks like a really nice chalice. And if you look very closely up here, you can see a lot of just the kind of rough areas around the smooth areas. This was created by two not so very unique tools, a hammer and a nail created all of these thousands of, of little indentations here to create this incredible piece of art from World War II. Here's another example. This is a propeller blade that was carved out. You can see carved out down here and you know some beautiful carvings in here to be to, to hold a photograph. The tools one might have used? Uh, the tools could have been used. It, it, there could have been a, a screwdriver because they, they did have a lot of tools that they used for uh, uh, to put some of their ammunition together and such. And so, so they probably used just some some general tools. But it's it's really quite remarkable. Here's another yes. example of of some of the metalwork. But this this has some painting as well because this I think was was born out of necessity, as you can see. Box, isn't it? This was yeah. holding matches, as a matter of fact, to protect them during the weather and such. But it was carved out of again that that metal there, and you can see very intricate carvings in there with and coloring with coloring as well so there's definitely a, a painting aspect there and this is a nice little little ashtray as well 
So it is, it's really remarkable when you think not just about the art pieces themselves, but when and how and by whom they were created. Just the history that is in this art. And one final piece here, you can see these, these bombs here. These were actually taken back home and made into lamps. Yeah, very fascinating. Here to see at the Air Zoo. Absolutely, on display. Troy, time to put me to work. What's happening here? Well, we are standing in front of our uh, FM2 Wildcat that was on the bottom of Lake Michigan for 68 years. The Air Zoo got it from the Navy on restoration loan a little over a year ago. And in about four more years from now, this beautiful airplane is going to be fully restored. And we're looking for a home for it right now, potentially over at the Navy Pier. But until then, we've got a lot of restoration work to do. And we've got about 50 or so restoration volunteers who work here five, sometimes six days a week, you know, really looking to restore this airplane back to its former glory. Yep. So we've got a little brush here and we're still in the very early stages of glasses, this restoration. Right? Yes, you got your goggles on and I'm gonna do the same. And what we've, we've realized with this airplane was, it was again on the bottom of Lake Michigan for almost seven decades and lots of things grew on it in that time. Lots of plant life, lots of mussels as well. Mm -hmm. And so one of the first things that our restoration volunteers have to do is get it clean. Yes. We've got to get all of this so little plant life off if there. If I'm to start, I'm gonna go like this. Sure, absolutely, scrub away. Now, you are working on an airplane from the 1940s that was on the bottom of a lake for almost 70 years. We've got about 50 restoration volunteers and many of them are retired, but they are our former craftsmen in their own right, whether they're woodworkers or metal workers. So they, of course, bring their own brand of art to this airplane because you know a lot of this work that we're doing there's restoring work but then there's also creating new pieces there are some components that we don't have that we're going to have to recreate and to do that you know these these craftsmen are going to be working for the next four years in really bringing that art and crafting these pieces in order to make this airplane whole my goal would then be to clean this as much as possible. What happens? That's right. Well, we've, we've got to get this as clean as we can because even though this, this airplane has really deteriorated quite a bit, and I'm just going to reach down here, I want to show you one of the intake valves to see how it's deteriorated. You can see how it's rusted so badly over 68 years underwater. So we have a lot of work to do. We want to save as much as we can, as much of the original metal as we can, which is why we're doing this cleaning. We're, it looks like we're going to be able to save about 90% of this total airplane that we were able to bring up. And so in order to do that, yes, it's a lot of tedious cleaning with things that look like toothbrushes, but again, we are preserving history yes, here. Yes, yeah. I gotta get to work. Let's go. Shelly, what are some of the most unique things you saw at the Air Zoo? Oh my gosh, it was so exciting. One of the favorite things I liked was actually getting to sit inside of a plane and I think it was one of the, the bombers and it was a, a, a kind of an eerie experience to know that uh, this, was, this was the real deal and now it's here for, for us to explore. So, uh, so much to do, lots of hands-on experiences available. And I understand NASA well represented in Kalamazoo. Yeah, right here in Kalamazoo. NASA is represented with a it's called the Saturn V, you know, that actually flew up uh, to the, up to our our, our moon and uh, pieces of that uh, in the, in for us to view. So it, it's just all of the excitement of kind of the name, an air zoo. I also appreciated uh, well helping to clean some of the uh, pieces of an actual. Uh, plane that um, that had gone down so that was kind of emotional and the mural in there is world famous thank you, thank you very much Ellie. watch Kalamazoo Lively Arts every Tuesday at 6 p.m.